Hi and welcome to the channel. My name is Heiko. This is a test video of the Scalphan S30 Ultra 33 Watt Laser Engraver. Alright, so the guys from Scalphan reached out to me some weeks ago and they asked me if I would like to test their tool. And I said, yes, if I do not have any restrictions, give me the tool. So they sent it to me and yeah, I tested it over the last weeks and I want to share with you my experience. How uh, did I test it? So first the assembly part. There's a little trick I want to show you because I found that some guy struggling with one adjustment and that's so easy to cover, I tell you. The next step is mechanical. And um, the mechanical test is something where a lot of videos, they, they don't cover that really. And I'm into mechanics, I, I like how machines work and this is very important, I think, if you look into the future, how true the machine is, how easy it is to adjust, how repetitive are the cuts, how thick are the cuts and so on. So this is what I cover there. And then we do cutting of material. Most videos they cover plywood, maybe a little bit of um, plastics, but not much. So I cover a lot of materials here so that you can see if this kind of tool serves in your shop as well or can serve in your shop as well and uh, yeah we did some little projects on the way I show you that and at the end I sum up the whole machine my findings the the good and the negative parts of the machine and how a future me would use that tool in a shop okay very long intro let's jump right in Unboxing the whole engraver was a joy. So they packed everything perfectly and there are also two aluminum sheets as a cutting protection and some distance pieces to rest your work pieces on. And what struck me the most is that they put a bag of spare screws in. That's really handy, always good to have, yeah, just fantastic. The assembly of the S30 Ultra was really a fun thing. It was like a big Lego. Everything was yeah, made perfect. No sharp edges. Every thread was cut. Every single step was described in the handbook and they even packed little bags of screws for every little step. So yeah, it was an absolutely beginner friendly project. No special tools. Everything was there. The only thing you have to make sure is that you have a big work area. This is a huge machine. You need a, at least a work area of three by three feet or 90 by 90 centimeters. Bigger is better. There are some, or I saw that there are some troubles with adjusting this caster or this, this little roll here. It is responsible for a play-free sliding of the whole device. So it has to be tight to the, to the rail, but not too tight. If it is too loose, it starts shaking during operation. Um, or if it is too tight, the motor has too much resistance and will lose steps so the machine gets unprecise. A good way to adjust that is taking just a piece of writing paper and if this fits through the through this gap um, and you can't remove it with with the slight pull you know if it's coming loose now it would be too yeah too loose you have to adjust it and bring it closer to the rail but if you can pull it out without ripping it apart that's a good way to start. So I did it that way and my machine works flawlessly. All right, laser is ready and what to cut first? From all the things you can cut, I cut a square. Why a square? You have to know that a laser beam is very seldom a perfectly round thing. It's more an elliptical thing. So that leads to a point where the laser cuts in the x-axis in a different thickness than in the y-axis and you have to correct for that. That sounds complicated, it is not. Just paint a square, cut it, measure it and then you can tell light burn, I use light burn here, you can tell the software what you want to cut and what you received and the software will correct for the rest. There are more sophisticated methods, offset, correction and so on, but this is a very easy method and you can develop from there.
So my square was intended to be 80 by 80 millimeters. So the first cuts were 0 0.2 and 0 0.4 millimeters off. I corrected that and as you can see now it is really on spot. As a next step I want to know how thick are the cuts in x and y direction. As mentioned they are different. So I cut two angles just a x and a y cut. Y2 one of these angles I cut with one pass through the material. The laser is powerful enough to do that. And the second one I cut with two passes through that material. So there is a slight difference in the thickness and you should know about that. That's um, with all the laser that is the same but you have to know the values to yeah to be precise in your constructions and projects. So the next test I did because I saw a video in what a guy tested exactly the same machine with a 33 watt laser module and he claimed that due to the construction of the laser he had a kind of swinging laser beam. He engraved some icons and there was a gear in and because of the change of acceleration x y and so on the laser was kind of swinging after the movement and that resulted in a not clear sharp line. And I really tested it with a laser to a lowest possible point so it has the most work to do in accelerating decelerating and I cut with various speeds various sizes of gears and I never had a kind of swinging or shaking laser so I received always very clear lines very true lines I'm not sure what was wrong with his laser maybe the resonance frequency or some kind of yeah wrong adjustment I do not know but my laser here works really perfect and follows the line as it should do. Our last mechanical test is a homing test so what does that mean? I want to test if the homing position is true and if the travel distance is very accurate. Um, the test is as follows. We drive it to the home position then I cut one circle in each corner of a big workpiece so that I have the maximum travel distance and then I let it return to home and do it again. During the last circle cut I interrupt the cutting process as I really want to just have a half circle engraved and then I do it again. So three runs and what I want to see here is if the homing position is always the same. That is a really important thing if you build kind of templates. If you want to engrave, I do not know, pencils, coins or even little labels or stuff like that so that you have um, always the same position if you start your engraving process with a different workpiece but the, the same kind of outcome you want to have. So this is very important for this kind of operation and I want to see if we have if we use the full distance of travel and this is a huge machine if it is still accurate or if it is kind of losing steps in the motor um, because you have to move all the cables and, and, and wires and stuff. So this tells me how accurate is the machine in repetitions and over long distances and as you can see the outcome it, it's yeah close to perfect I think it's for for homing going back homing going back we lose five hundredths of a millimeter maybe this is all I could find out so it is really really close to perfect I, I can't complain and I do not know how to make it more accurate it's a fantastic result that we have here so pretty damn impressive All right, now it is finally time to cut some materials. I use Lightburn as my software, so there's a little yeah, option in there for material tests. And I test MDF here first. You just have to define the parameters and it starts cutting. I followed directly with a little project. I made this box from an old IKEA shelf back wall. Very easy project. There are free pages available in what you can create every kind of imaginable box. 
that you want to have with dividers, the dimensions are free. So yeah, you can make boxes from scrap wood. Imagine the possibilities for gifts, for storage solutions, I I crazy. And I learned something here, the stickers IKEA use, they containing RFID chips. So the laser cuts through that, but it was a very smoky process as there are metals in and not only paper. <laughs> so yeah, next I'm going to show you some material tests I made. And an explanation for that, I just test maximum 90% of the laser power. Why? you would never use 100% as it reduces the lifespan of your diode drastically. So I don't want to test here something that you would never do at home. It's better to let the laser run a second time the full shape you want to cut out than to go to 100%. Keep in mind, this machine is a 33 watt laser. So if I cut here with 90%, it's far more than a 20 watt laser with 100%. In your face, 20 watt lasers. If you want to engrave or cut through very soft materials or you want to cut out very fine pieces, you need a support below your workpiece. So a big honeycomb would be best. But if you can't afford or don't want to afford, here you can see a kind of makeshift honeycomb. This is an old cloth rail I cut to length and it, yeah, it works. You know that I'm a huge fan of upcycling and reclaiming material and you see me here now using an old piece of printer housing it was. So as soon as you have a flat piece of plastic salvaged from any kind of yeah, housing, you can use that, throw it into the laser engraver and make a test cut. Even if the material is brittle or something kind of odd shaped, this tool works almost force free. So if you use a normal saw or a router, you really have to uh, clamp it somehow tight. And with a laser, you can use tiny pieces. That's really, really great to yeah, save some money, reuse material. And here's something to learn from my experience. I made a little test tube rack for my oldest son. I used my makeshift kind of honeycomb, but I didn't think about the placing of that pieces. So some of the cutout pieces, they moved like a seesaw and they were sticking out of the surface. And in a later cutting run, the laser had catched on one of these little pieces and move my whole work material here so that it was actually a miscut and the full material was lost. Yeah, I have to do all that again, but I show you the result here. It, it was a really nice little project and that's just an example for you what is possible with that kind of laser tool. By the way, I made the full construction of that by myself with Lightburn, so I did not use any other software. Lightburn was enough for me and it was a very easy process. Took me 15 minutes or something to construct that and then yeah, I had to two times cut it out.
All right, that was a pretty long testing session here. I hope you found my tests kind of plausible. If you have any questions or recommendations for tests, let me know in the comments. And if you want to see more laser videos in the future, let me know in the comments as well. Um, yeah, to sum up everything, a negative point. I have, negative is too harsh. It is not a showstopper, but a thing that I would like to see improved on that machine and I will modify it afterwards is the cable management. I don't like this kind of snakes coming out here somewhere by accident on the machine and it's moving and you need a lot of space here. So if you want to accommodate the whole thing in a housing, this cable management makes a bigger housing necessary. So it's even more complicated to bring that big tool nicely in your shop for me, a kind of drag chain would be a good solution. So maybe Skullfun, if you listen, um, kind of constructed in that way that you can attach some some uh, thing like a drag chain uh, with ease. Then then yeah, then I had no things to complain about. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> the positive things. Three things I want to highlight here: the size. The size is fantastic. You can use big chunks of material you can throw it in the machine you do not have to buy smaller pieces so that you waste money by buying smaller pieces you can uh, buy cheaper and then you can use the material more effective so if you have to make the decision between a bigger laser and a more powerful laser take the bigger one the bigger one you can't substitute for the size if the laser is not as powerful as this one yeah, you need another run around the um, yeah, around the shape. That's all right. It takes you a little bit of time, but the size you can't compensate for. And then speaking of power, 33 watts. That's that's a number. So I wouldn't go below the 20 watts, but this is somewhere in the sweet spot because you can without going to the limits of the diode you can just cut through every kind of material so that is really fantastic a good choice this is and um, yeah 33 watts that's everything I have to say here third thing the precision so the repetitive precision that this machine delivers is is amazing so yeah kind of impressive how with this huge machine how accurate it works that's the absolutely <laughs> fantastic thing about that machine so overall this machine from my side is a 100 percent recommendation to buy so if you if you're kind of thinking about buying a laser engraver this could be the machine for you if you if the budget is more tight take a 20 watt but take the same kind of size and yeah i hope you found this whole video useful and it helped you to get an impression of the machine how to test your machine even and i hope that you like to see more videos of laser stuff coming up because they will uh, but the next project will be clearly a housing for, for that machine I hope I see you next time around here on my shop, on, on my channel, in my shop. Happy crafting, guys.